Hey, hey friends. friends, I'm Grace Ann and I'm Andrea and we are GNA for today and we are two best friends living a faith-based lifestyle and documenting it. Make sure you follow us on social media. We have an Instagram and a Twitter and they're both at GNA for today. We both also have personal social media. I have an Instagram and a Twitter. It'll be flashing on the screen and tagged in the description below. Andrea also has Instagram and Twitter, which will be on the screen and in the description below. Make sure to follow us there so you guys don't miss a single update. Check in the description box below for a link to our video from last week. If you have not seen last week's video, hit pause and click that description link because this is a part two of a three part and part one was last week. So you don't wanna miss out on that. So if you haven't watched part one, then pause and watch that first. And then this week's video, we are continuing our Food for the Soul series on James. This will be part two, so it'll be chapters two and chapters three, chap chapter three. Um, so grab your Bibles and follow along. So we're gonna go ahead and get straight into it. Grab your Bibles and we're gonna start with James chapter two. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but you say to the poor man, you stand there, or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are blaspheming the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. So I really liked that chapter. I feel like the first half and the second half didn't really flow together. They were just two chunks of separate ideas. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the first chunk and how he talked about not discriminating and not judging others. He talked about the poor man coming in that doesn't look nice, but the rich man coming in that has a gold ring and is dressed all nice and treating them differently. And yes, that is a way to show judgment towards others, but sometimes I feel like the way we show judgment towards others is not as obvious. I feel like sometimes subconsciously we judge people based on how they look or based on how they smell or whatever. We make rash decisions about them and decide 
who they are to us. And a lot of times we just don't take the time to get to know a person before we make our own judgment about them. And that is not what the Lord wants us to do. But I feel like that's a more common way of judging in our personal lives than what James was talking about, how when you actually treat someone different. Well, I feel like in our minds, whenever we judge people based off of how they look and stuff like that, it's still judgment. It's just not as obvious but we still need to be aware of it because that is still a sin okay i loved how in verse 19 it said you know let me read it because i can't do justice okay it says you believe that there is one god good even the demons believe that and shudder i feel like i could preach a whole sermon on this verse it's not enough just to have faith that there is a god there's so much more that goes into it because even the devil even the demons believe that God exists, but they're not living righteous lives. So I feel like that's a testament to how we need to act as Christians. Like, yes, we need to have faith. Yes, we need to have actions, but we need to put those together because if we just have faith, like demons have faith that God is real. But what sets us apart is that we put the actions with our faith. So a couple of points that I had from chapter two of James um, is the first one, is based off of, let's see, verses kind of like eight through 11-ish. Um, and those are, if you keep the royal law, if you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself, you are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the law as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law, yet stumbles just at one point is guilty of breaking it all. And this is something that I've always kind of struggled with understanding as a child and like growing up studying ministry, or studying the Bible and um, developing into ministry. It's something that is hard to comprehend, but I think that James is making a good point in saying like sin is sin, right? And this is kind of a, a complex way of saying it, but he's essentially saying if you don't follow love your neighbor as yourself, then you're sinning. And if you don't follow, don't commit adultery, but you love your neighbor as yourself, it's still sin, right? You're still committing adultery. Um, you're still not following the Ten Commandments. You're still not following what God has established for you to follow. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of times we can forget and we like to put weight on sin and say, well, well, yeah, I might have told a lie, but at least I didn't commit murder. Or, well, yeah, at least, you know, I might have, I don't know, I might have gotten drunk and done so and so and so and so, but at least I, at least I didn't commit adultery. At least I didn't get divorced. At least I didn't do that. At least I didn't do this. Right? We like to put weight on it, but that's not what it is. If we commit sin in any form, it's sin, and we've committed sin against the Lord, and it's all the same in His eyes, and I think that James pointing this out in the first top of the chapter um, is very important for us to remember. And then my next point um, for chapter two of James is um, based off of verse 18 and 19. Um, and it says, but someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I'll show you my faith by my deeds. For you believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and they shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? So, this is probably one of my favorite verses in all of the Bible. Um, because I love talking about faith and works. Faith versus works and stuff like that. It's something that I've always loved debating back and forth and talking about. Um, I think it's super interesting. So, what, essentially what James is saying here is like, Yes, you um, have faith, but, sorry, um, yes, you have faith and yes, you have works, but you can show your faith by your work and you can show your work by your faith. Um, and that's something that a lot of people don't recognize and they don't abide by, right? They don't understand that working and doing all of these things like visiting homeless shelters and reaching out to prisons and stuff if you're doing all of that for the visual of it and for people to recognize you you're not doing it for the right reasons you're not doing it out of your faith 
right? And out of necessity and out of desire to serve the Lord. Um, and I think that that's something that a lot of times we as Christians don't, don't necessarily think about consciously, but subconsciously we know whether what we're doing is, is for the right reasons or not. Um, and I think that James pointing this out and then talking about Abraham and everything uh, really, really calls us out and says like, hey, yeah, you have works. Yes, you, yes, you have, you've done all these great things, but where's your faith? Is your faith there to support those works? Um, and I think that, that that's very important. So I'm going to read James chapter 3 from the NIV. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect or able to keep their body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Uh, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a word of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body and sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing, my brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by their deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. For if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. For such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and self-ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. So uh, a couple of things that I wanted to point out from this chapter of James. First of all, I think this is one of the harshest chapters that James writes and it's it's one that like calls everyone out on the floor. Um, James is one of those people that is like, hey, guess what? Reality check, this is what you gotta be doing. Um, and he calls you out in a minute. Um, but I love that, I love that. I love, I love passages that call you out on the floor because it really makes you think and evaluate how you're living, what you're doing, what you're saying, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is um, the taming of the tongues idea that James is talking about here. I am not going to like not be truthful. It's hard for me sometimes to tame my tongue. I am a very blunt person and I like to shoot off at the mouth real quick. And like James says, I get called out for it in a minute because I am a very, very um, in tune Christian, if you want to use that word. Um, I am a self-proclaimed Christian. I tell literally everyone all the time about God and what, and like my job is as a youth pastor. So like my literal life is reading scripture and teaching the gospel. Um, so that means like a whole bunch of eyes are on me, right? But at the same time, I'm still human. So I still slip up and make mistakes, but that is my fault. Um, cursing and praising are two directly opposite things, but they both come from the same place. They both come from the same mouth. And I think that as Christians, we need to be really careful 
what we say, how we say things, and where we say things. Um, because you don't want to be somewhere that you're witnessing and spouting all these curse words out every other minute and then turn around and say, oh, well, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, and it's a sin to curse. You shouldn't do that. You should change your ways, right? Uh, you need to make sure that your tongue and your speech and your the way that you talk, the way that you carry yourself, the way you present yourself is in line with what you're preaching and is in line with how you're sharing the gospel. So my second point is about wisdom. So James speaks very highly at the end of this chapter about wisdom and he says, Wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace also reap a harvest of righteousness. Now, this is, like, those two verses are, like, etched into my brain. So, I love the fruits of the Spirit, right? If you, if you know all about the fruits of the Spirit, you know that you can kind of pull, you can see where James has kind of pulled these ideas from, right? Um, we're all about humility and sowing in peace, right? And, and being, bringing peace to the world because... Sin has brought, like, earthliness, humanness, has brought sin to earth, right? So us being Christians, we need to try and battle that evil by bringing peace and, and kindness and love and, and humility and selflessness, right? And James is like, he's reminding us that when we take God's wisdom, when we ask God, okay, give me Give me your words, give me your your heart, your eyes, your hands, your feet, that the wisdom that comes from heaven is pure. It is not full of hatred, it is not um, to bring people down, it's not condemning, it is loving, it is kind, it is, it is submissive, merciful, it's full of good fruit. Um, and I think that that's something that is good for us to remember, that we can take what we say and what we do and we can look at them and we can tell whether we are taking wisdom from earth or from the heavens and I think it's really important that we continue to pray for God's wisdom and his guidance in our lives so that we can be sowers of peace. Something I wanted to talk about in this chapter was something that I feel like people will just fly by and just keep reading but it kind of stuck out to me. It was whenever it said, we who teach will be judged more strictly. And we've talked about on our channel before about how whenever you're a Christian, people are watching you and they just take note of every action and everything you say because you're kind of held to a higher standard than the rest of society. But in here, Paul shows us that leaders are held even to a higher standard than the Christian standard. I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention because I feel like we could just read right by that but if you're in a position of leadership you need to take it very seriously and you need to know wow more people are watching me than when I was just a Christian but now I'm in a Christian leadership position that is so much more responsibility and whenever you accept a position like that you should know that and you should try your best to be able to be held up to those standards and actually live up to those standards. I found it interesting how in verse 8 it said, no human can tame the tongue. And I just found that to be so true because there are so many things in life that we can't do and taming the tongue is one of them. But there is good news. We, we alone can't tame the tongue, but when we have God's help and we ask him to help us, then he will. So, I don't want us to take this verse and think, oh, we can't tame the tongue, then let's just not even try. No, like, you can't tame the tongue, but God can tame the tongue. So let's ask him to help us tame our tongues because we can't do it alone. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Leave some comments below if you have any opinions, any comments, or anything you want to add to this discussion to this Bible study. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Make sure that you hit that like button down below because it really helps us out. Next to that like button is a big red button that says subscribe. Make sure you click that so you don't miss an upload. And then right next to that button, there's a little bell that swings back and forth. Hit that little bell so that you get notifications every single time we post a video.
next week will be our very last video in this three-part series. We will be reading chapters four and five of James. Bye, Bye friends! friends.